Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about dementia. This will be continuing my block of podcasts on mental illnesses and disorders. I will put the link for the article in the description. And a lot of these are not opinion piece articles. They're more uh, like this is from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. It's more of a criteria and a, you know, interprofessional type memorandum type thing they put up for education. So this has links in it that'll give you deep dives into certain things they're talking about. Highlighted words, for instance. I'll read it word for word. I need to check my two cents here and there. I will fuck up the English language like crazy. So that'll be a fun time. It always happens. Uh, and I don't think I can discredit for this. Uh, I try to give credit for the article. Oh, see, I keep calling them article, but let me look. I don't see it here. This happens on a lot of these, uh, you know, institute type uh, articles or web pages. All right. So again, link will be in the description. I usually usually don't forget. This is be dementias and. As I discussed in a lot of my other podcasts, it's hard to determine or even insinuate one disorder is worse than the other in that sense, or a disorder, an illness, um, having depression, clinical depression. But dementia is one of those scary ones. It's just a terrifying concept. Everything about it is... um, just terrifying to me and if you look at my thumbnail for my um for the for the actual video it's um best ways to ward off dementia and it'd be like reading exercise uh sharing activities and they give a percentage so like reading and etc will like 23 percent it'll cut your odds down and i gotta admit i read I love reading. I've loved reading since I was a kid. And maybe that gives me a little bit of a... You know, of a guard against something like this. But just a terrifying whole illness. It's just... Ugh. So my heart goes out to everybody. Although I might chuckle and laugh at my fucking up of the English language and medical terms. I... My heart does go out. I do feel... You know, immense compassion and understanding for people going through these things, family members, and I'm sure lots of us have, you know, connective tissue to people we know, if it's not family, friends or family, maybe a wife's family, and it, it could be um, so stressful and impactful on a family. So I'll start with introduction. A diagnosis of dementia can be frightening for those affected by the syndrome, their family members and caretakers. Learning more about this medical condition can help. This page provides an overview of various types of dementia, describes how the disorders are diagnosed and treated, and offers highlights of research supported by the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, NINDS, and the National Institute on Aging, NIA, both part of the National Institutes of Health. Alzheimer's disease and related dementias have a high impact on public health and are a priority for NIH-supported research. A glossary of terms is found at the bottom of the page. The basics of dementia and cognitive impairment. Dementia is the loss of cognitive functioning, the ability to think, remember, or reason, to such an extent that it interferes with a person's daily life and activities. These functions include memory, language skills, visual perception, problem-solving, self-management, and the ability to focus and pay attention. Some people with dementia cannot control their emotions, and their personalities may change. Dementia ranges in severity from the mildest age, when it's just beginning to affect a person's functioning, to the most severe stage, when the person must depend completely on others for basic activities of daily living, ADLS. Age is the primary risk factor for developing dementia. For that reason, the number of people living with dementia could double in the next 40 years as the number of Americans aged 65 or older increases 
to more than 88 million in 2050. Regardless of the form of dementia, the personal, economic, and social demands can be devastating. Dementia is not the same age-related cognitive decline. Oh, the dementia is not the same as age-related cognitive decline. When certain areas of thinking, memory, and information processing slow at age, but intelligence remains unchanged. Unlike dementia, age-related memory loss isn't disabling. Occasional lapses of forgetfulness are normal in elderly adults. While dementia is more common with advanced age, as many as half of all people age 85 or older may have some form of dementia, it is not an inevitable part of aging. Many people live into the 90s and beyond without any signs of dementia. Dementia is also not the same as delirium, which is usually a short-term complication of a medical condition and most often can be treated successfully. Signs and symptoms of dementia result when once healthy neurons, nerve cells, in the brain stop working, lose connections with other brain cells, and die. While everyone loses some neurons as they age, People with dementia experience far greater loss. Mild, incognit- mild, mild cognitive impairment (MCI) is a stage between normal cognitive changes that may occur with age and more serious symptoms that indicate dementia. Symptoms of MCI can include problems with thinking, judgment, memory, and language. But the loss doesn't significantly interfere with the ability to handle everyday activities. Symptoms of MCI include mild memory loss, difficulty with planning or organization, trouble finding words, frequently losing or misplacing things, and forgetting names, conversations, and events. Someone with MCI may be at a greater risk of eventually developing Alzheimer's or another type of dementia, particularly if the degree of memory impairment is significant, but MCI does not always progress to dementia. Symptoms may remain stable for several years and even improve over time in some cases, for some people. It is common to have more than one cause of dementia. Many people with dementia have both Alzheimer's disease and one or more closely related disorders that share brain scanning or clinical features, and sometimes both, with Alzheimer's disease. When a person is affected by more than one dementia disorder, the dementia can be referred to as a mixed dementia. Autopsy studies of brains of people who had dementia suggest that a majority of those age 80 and older probably had a mixed dementia caused by Alzheimer's-related neurodegenerative processes, vascular disease-related processes, or another neurodegenerative condition. In fact, some studies indicate that mixed vascular degenerative dementia is the most common cause of dementia in the elderly. Researchers are still trying to understand the online disease process involved in dementia. Scientists have some theories about the mechanisms that may lead to different forms of dementia, but more research is needed to better understand it and how these mechanisms are involved. Wow. Dementia is associated with aging and neurodegeneration. Various disorders and factors contribute to dementia resulting in a progressive and irreversible loss of neurons and brain functions. Currently, there is no cure, there are no cures for these neurodegenerative disorders. Some specific causes of dementia disorders are explained below. Alzheimer's disease, AD, is the most common cause of dementia in older adults. As many as 5 million Americans, age 65 or older, may have the disease. In most neurodegenerative diseases, certain proteins abnormally clump together and are thought to damage healthy neurons, causing them to stop functioning and die. In Alzheimer's disease, fragments of a protein called amyloid form abnormal clusters called plaques between brain cells, and a protein called tau forms tangles inside nerve cells. It seems likely that damage to the brain starts a decade or more before memory and other cognitive problems appear. The damage often initially appears in the hippocampus, which is part of the brain essential in forming memories. Ultimately, the plaques and tangles spread throughout the brain and brain tissue significantly shrinks. As Alzheimer's disease progresses, people experience greater memory loss and other cognitive difficulties. Problems include wandering and getting lost, trouble handling money and paying bills, repeating questions, taking longer to complete daily tasks, 
a personality and behavior changes. People are often diagnosed in this stage. Memory loss and confusion worsen, and people begin to have problems recognizing family and friends. They may be unable to learn new things, carry out multi-step tasks, such as getting dressed, or cope with new situations. In addition, people at this stage may have hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia, and may behave impulsively. People with severe Alzheimer's disease cannot communicate and are completely dependent on others for their care. The person may be in bed most of all of the time as body functions shut down. Certain drugs can temporarily slow some symptoms of Alzheimer's from getting worse, but currently there are no treatments that stop the progression of the disease. Researchers have not found a single gene solely responsible for Alzheimer's disease. Rather, multiple genes are likely involved. One genetic risk factor, having one form of the apolipulpatine E APO, gene on chromosome 19 does increase a person's risk for developing AD. People who inherit one copy of the APO E4 allele, allele have increased chance of developing the disease. Allele. That's like that's biology. I know you're fucking with the alleles. Um, those who inherit two copies of the allele are you at even greater risk. An allele is a variant form of a pair of genes that are located on a particular chromosome and control the same trait. I see it as it gives an explanation. I do fucking read these fucking things, you know. The APOE4 allele may also be associated with an earlier onset of memory loss and other symptoms. Researchers have found that this allele is associated with an increased number of amyloid plaques in the brain tissue of affected people. Frontotemporal disorders are forms of dementia caused by a family of neurodegenerative brain diseases collectively called frontotemporal lobar degeneration. They primarily affect the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain, rather than the widespread shrinking and wasting away atrophy of brain tissue seen in Alzheimer's disease. In these disorders, changes to nerve cells in the brain's frontal lobes affect the ability to reason and make decisions, prioritize, and multitask, act appropriately, and control movement. Changes to the temporal lobes affect memory and how people understand words, recognize objects, and recognize and respond to emotions. Some people decline rapidly over two to three years, while others show only minimal changes for many years. People can live with front temporal or oh, frontotemporal disorders for two to ten years, sometimes longer, but it is difficult to predict the signs and symptoms that may vary greatly among individuals at different parts of the brain are affected. No treatment for curing or reversing frontotemporal disorders is currently available. Clinically, FTD is classified into two main types of syndromes. Behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia, BVFPD, involves changes in behavior, judgment, and personality. People with this disorder may have problems with cognition, but their memory may stay relatively intact. They may do impulsively things that are out of character or may engage in repetitive, unusual behaviors. People with BV FTD may say or do inappropriate things or become uncaring. Over time, language and or movement problems may occur. Next one is primary progressive aphasia, PPA. It involves changes in the ability to speak, understand and express thoughts and or words and to write and read many people with ppa though not all develop symptoms of dementia problems with memory reasoning and judgment are not apparent at first but can develop and progress over time sometimes a person with ppa cannot recognize the faces of familiar people and common objects uh, semantic ppa in parentheses other individuals have increased trouble producing speech and may eventually be unable to speak at all. Aromatic PPA. PPA is a large, a language disorder that is not the same as the problems with speech and ability to read and write aphasia that can result from a stroke. Other types of frontotemporal disorders include cortical basal degeneration, CBD, involves progressive nerve cell loss and atrophy of specific areas of the brain which can affect memory, behavior, thinking, language, and movement. The disease is named at the parts of the brain that are affected. The cerebral cortex, 
the outer part of the brain, and the basal ganglia structures deep in the brain involved with movement. Not everyone who has CBD has problems with memory, cognition, language, or behavior. The disease tends to progressively uh, progress gradually with early symptoms beginning around age 60. Some of the movement symptoms of CBD are similar to those seen in Parkinson's disease. Frontotemporal dementia with motor neuron disease. FTDMND, also known as FTDALS. is a combination of behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia as a progressive neuromuscular weakness typically seen in amyotropic lateral sclerosis, ALS. ALS is a neurodegenerative disease that attacks nerve cells responsible for controlling voluntary muscles, muscle actions that can be controlled such as the arms, legs, and face. Symptoms of other disease may appear first, with other symptoms developing over time. Pick's disease is characterized by pick bodies, masses comprised of the tau protein that accumulate inside nerve cells, causing them to appear enlarged or balloon-like. It is usually seen with BVFTD, but sometimes with PPA. Some symptoms are similar to those of Alzheimer's disease, including loss of speech, changes in behavior, and trouble with thinking. However, while inappropriate behavior characterized in the early stages of PIC disease, memory loss is often the first symptoms of AD. Antidepressants and antipsychotics can control some of the behavioral symptoms of PIC disease, but no treatment is available to stop the disease from progressing. Progressive supranuclear palsy, PSP is a brain disease that can cause problems with thinking, memory, behavior, problem solving, and judgment. It also affects the control of eye movements, mood, speech, swallowing, vision, concentration, and language. Because certain parts of the brain that control movement are damaged, this disease shares some of the problems with movement seen in people with cardiovascular degenerative and Parkinson's disease. Holy shit! Wow, fucking jeez. I can't, just can't like imagine all these things. I've talked about it. I've done a lot of these podcasts now. The mental illnesses and oh, this is this might be just the most devastating. Lewy body dementia, LBD, is one of the most common causes of dementia after Alzheimer's disease and vascular disease. It is typically begins after age 50, but can occur earlier. It involves abnormal, abnormal protein deposits called Lewy bodies, which are balloon-like structures that form inside nerve cells. The abnormal buildup of the protein alpha-synuclein and other protein causes neurons to work less effectively and die. Initial symptoms may vary, but over time, people with these disorders develop similar cognitive, behavioral, physical, and sleep-related symptoms. Lewy body dementia includes two related conditions, dementia with Lewy bodies and Parkinson's disease dementia. In dementia with Lewy bodies, the cognitive symptoms are seen within a year of movement symptoms called Parkinsonism. Parkin- Parkinson- Parkinsonisms. Well, <laughs> eventually, I, I was fucking stoned. I was doing okay. I would say okay. It wasn't doing good. I was doing okay. Including tremor, difficulty with waking and posture, and rigid muscles. In Parkinson's disease dementia, the cognitive symptoms develop more than a year after movement problems begin. Dementia with Lewy bodies, DLB, is one of the more common forms of progressive dementia. Neurons in the outer layer of the brain cortex and in the substantia nigra, a region involved with the production of dopamine, degenerate. Many neurons that remain contain Lewy bodies. Symptoms such as difficulty sleeping, loss of smell, and visual hallucinations often precede movement and other problems as many as 10 years. Later in the course of DLB, some signs and symptoms are similar to Alzheimer's disease. It may include memory loss, poor judgment, and confusion. Other signs and symptoms of DLB are similar to those of Parkinson's disease including difficulty with movement and posture, a shuffling walk, and changes in alertness and attention. There is no cure for DLB, but there are drugs that control some symptoms. Parkinson's disease dementia, PDD, can occur with people with Parkinson's disease, but not all people with Parkinson's disease will develop dementia. PDD may affect memory, social judgment, 
language, or reasoning. Autopsy studies show that people with PDD often have Lewy bodies in the cortex and other brain areas, and many have amyloid plaques and tau tra- tangles, like those found in people with Alzheimer's disease. Though the causes of these similarities are not clear, the time from the onset of movement symptoms to the onset of dementia symptoms varies greatly from person to person. Risk factors for developing PDD include the onset of Parkinson's-related movement symptoms followed by mild cognitive impairment and REM sleep disorder, which involves having frequent nightmares and hallucinations. Oh, fuck. Wow. <laughs> Vascular contributions to cognitive impairment and dementia, VCID, cause significant changes to memory, thinking, and behavior. Cognition and brain function can significantly affect the size, location, and number of brain injuries. Vascular dementia and vascular cognitive impairment arise as a result of risk factors that similarly increase the risk of cerebrovascular disease, a stroke, including atrial fibrillation, hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol. Symptoms of VCID can begin suddenly and progress or subside during one's lifetime. VCID can occur along with Alzheimer's disease. People with VCID almost always have abnormalities in the brain on magnetic resonance imaging, MRI scans. This evidence includes uh, prior strokes, often small and asymptomatic, as well as scattered changes in the brain's white matter, or the connecting wires of the brain that are critical for relaying messages between brain regions. Microscopic brain examination shows thickening of blood vessel walls called arterial sclerosis and thinning of or loss of components of the white matter. Forms of VCID include vascular dementia refers to progressive loss of memory and other cognitive functions caused by vascular injury or disease within the brain. Symptoms of vascular dementia may sometimes be difficult to distinguish from Alzheimer's disease. Problems with organization, attention, slow thinking, and problem solving are all more prominent in VCID, while memory loss is more prominent in Alzheimer's. Vascular cognitive impairment involves changes with language, attention, and the ability to think, reason, and remember that are noticeable but are not significant enough to greatly impact daily life. These changes caused by vascular injury or disease within the brain progress slowly over time. Post-stroke dementia can develop months after a major stroke. Not everyone who has had a major stroke will develop vascular dementia, but the risk for dementia is significantly higher in someone who has had a stroke. Multi-infarct dementia. (laughs) Multi-infarct. Dementia is a result of many small strokes, infarcts, and many strokes. Language or other functions may be impaired depending on the region of the brain that is affected. The, re- the risk for dementia is significantly higher in someone who has had a stroke. Dementia is more likely when a stroke affects both sides of the brain. Even strokes that don't show any noticeable symptoms can increase the risk of dementia. Hmm. Cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukinocephalopathy. <laughs> Come on! I was doing so fucking good! Cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukinocephalopathy. C-A-D-A-S-I-L. Fuck. Is an extremely rare inherited disorder caused by a thickening of the walls of small and medium sized blood vessels, which reduces the flow of blood to the brain. C C A D A S I L. Even the fucking. Even that's difficult. Wow, man, medical people just. You have more appreciation for them, even saying the words. C A D A S I L is associated with multi infarct dementia stroke, and other disorders. The first symptoms can appear in people between the ages of 20 and 40. Catacil, so I'm saying Catacil now, C-A-D-A-S-I-L, may have symptoms that can be in 
confused with multiple sclerosis. Many people with catacil are undiagnosed. Subcortal vascular dementia, previously known as Benwanger's disease. <laughs> B I N S W A N G R Binswanger's disease involves extensive microscopic damage to the small blood vessels and nerve fibers that make up white matter. Some consider it an aggressive form of multi infarct dementia. Or dementia. Dementia, right? Is it? Cognitive changes in, include problems with short term memory, organization, attention, decision making, and behavior. Symptoms tend to begin after age 60, as they progress in a stepwise manner. People with subcortical vascular disease often have high blood pressure, a history of stroke, or evidence of disease of the large blood vessels in the neck or heart valves. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy, angiopathy is a buildup of amyloid plaques in the walls of the blood vessels in the brain. It is generally diagnosed when multiple tiny bleeds in the brain are discovered using MRI. Whew, fuck. Neuropathy of neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative diseases. The different forms of age-related dementia, as well as many age-related neurodegenerative diseases, are thought to be caused by changes in various proteins. These diseases are called protein... Opathies, proteinopathies, because they involve the abnormal buildup of specific proteins in the brain. Mutations in genes that provide instructions for making these proteins have been found to cause dementia in families. However, in a vast majority of affected individuals, dementia is not inherited, and the cause is unknown. Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal disorders, and Lewy body dementia are proteinopathies. In some dementias, changes in the tau protein cause it to form clumps inside nerve cells in the brain, which is believed to make the cells stop functioning properly and die. Disorders that are associated with the abnormal buildup of tau are called tauopathies. <laughs> in Alzheimer's disease, the tau protein ag aggregates, accumulates into abnormal clumps, and becomes twisted and tangled, forming fibers. Neurofibrillary or tau tangles inside neurons, abnormal clumps plaques of the beta amyloid protein are prominent in spaces between brain cells. Both plaques and tangles are thought to contribute to the reduced function and nerve cell death in AD and are the hallmarks of the disease. Beta amyloid plaques are also seen in forms of LBD, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, and Parkinson's disease dementia. They are also common in elderly individuals who have not had dementia. Some, but not all, forms of frontotemporal disorders are tauopathies. Other forms of these disorders are associated with the buildup of the protein TDP43, a mutation in the gene called progranulin, <laughs> and another in a gene called C9ORF72. Okay, and uh, can cause frontotemporal disorders and accumulations of TB, TDP43 in nerve cells. In other dementias and some brain disorders, the protein synuclein becomes misshapen and forms harmful clumps inside neurons in different brain regions. Disorders in which synu uh, synuclein build, builds up inside neurons are called synucleinopathies of course of course it was fucking gonna be sino fucking synucleo synucleinopathies how silly changes in the synuclein and or its function are the basis of lbd and other disorders such as multiple system atrophy multiple system atrophy is a progressive neurodegenerative disease characterized by a combination of symptoms that affect both the autonomic nervous system the part of the nervous system that controls involuntary reactions such as blood pressure or digestion and movement these changes cause parkinsonism parkinsonism a condition resembling parkinson's disease reversible dementia like disorders and conditions many conditions that cause dementia like symptoms can be halted or even reversed 
with the appropriate treatment. Normal pressure hydrocephalus is a buildup of cerebrospinal, cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. Elderly individuals with the condition usually have trouble walking and with bladder control before the onset of dementia. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Oh, fucking. Hydrocephalus can be treated or even reversed by implanting a shunt system to divert fluid from the brain. Nutritional deficiencies of vitamin B, thiamine, caused by chronic alcoholism, and of vitamin B12 can be reversed with treatment. People who have abused substances such as alcohol and recreational drugs display signs of dementia even after the substance abuse has stopped. Side effects of medications or drug combinations may cause cognitive impairment that looks like a degenerative or vascular dementia, but which could reverse upon stopping these medications. Vasculitis. An inflammation of brain blood vessels can cause dementia after multiple strokes and may be treated with immo immunosuppressive medications. Subdural hematoma. <laughs> uh, that's not funny, but why is that funny? Sub subdural hemat see that's like a wrestling term. I think I mentioned it in one of my other pop terms. Like the one guy would say uma 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 glada or some fucking shit. Anyway, okay. Not funny. I'm not funny. Subdural hematoma or bleeding between the brain surface and its outer covering, the dura, is common after a fall. Subdural hematomas can cause dementia like symptoms and changes in mental function. With treatment, some symptoms can be reversed. Some ma non malignant brain tumors can cause symptoms re resembling dementia, and recovery follow occurs following the removal by neurosurgery. Some chronic infections around the brain, so called chronic meningitis, can cause dementia and may be treatable by drugs that kill the infectious agent. Other neurodegenerative diseases and, condi and conditions that include dementia or dementia like symptoms. Doctors have identified many other conditions that can cause dementia or dementia-like symptoms. The diseases have different symptoms that involve body and brain functions and affect mental health and cognition. Holy shit. And they just put a list of shit I'm never going to be able to fucking pronounce. Argy... Argyrophilic grain disease is common late onset degenerative disease that affects re brain regions involved in memory and emotion. It causes cognitive decline and changes in memory and behavior with difficulty finding words. The disease signs and symptoms are indistinguishable, indistinguishable from late onset AD. Confirmation of the disease diagnosis can be made only at autopsy. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, okay. All right. Whew. Kruisfeldt's Jacob disease. Now, I know this is a word I've heard before, but I don't give a... I just don't... I don't know what the fuck to do. C-R-E-U-T-Z-F-E-L-D-T. Kruisfeldt's Jacob disease, C-J-D, is a rare brain disorder that is characterized by rapidly progressive, progressing dementia. Scientists have found that the infectious proteins called prions become misshapen and tend to clump together, which cause brain damage. Initial symptoms include impaired memory, judgment, and thinking, along with the loss of muscle coordination and impaired vision. Some symptoms of CJD can be similar to symptoms of other progressive neurological disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, is caused by repeated traumatic brain injury, TBI, in some people with multiple concussions. People with CTE may develop dementia, poor coordination, slurred speech, and other symptoms similar to those seen in Parkinson's disease, 20 years or more after the injury. Late stage CTE is also characterized by brain atrophy and widespread deposits of tau in nerve cells. In some people, even just 5 to 10 years beyond the traumatic brain injury, behavioral mood changes may occur. 
Dementia may not yet be present, and the brain may not have started to shrink, but small deposits of tau are seen in specific brain regions at autopsy. Huntington's disease is an inherited progressive brain disease that affects a person's judgment, memory, ability to plan and organize, along with other cognitive functions. Symptoms typically begin around age 30 to 40 and include abnormal and uncontrollable movements, chorea, as well as problems with walking and lack of coordination. Cognitive problems worsen as the disease progresses and problems controlling movement lead to complete loss of ability for self-care. Jesus Christ. HIV-associated dementia had HAD can occur in people with human immunodeficiency virus, the virus that causes AIDS. HAD damages the brain's white matter and leads to a type of dementia associated with memory problems, social withdrawal, and trouble concentrating. People with HAD may develop movement problems as well. The incidence of HAD has dropped dramatically with the availability of effective antiviral therapies for managing the underlying HIV infections. That's good to know. Secondary dementias occur in people with disorders that damage brain tissue, such as such disorders may include multiple sclerosis, meningitis, and encephalitis, as well as Wilson's disease, in which excessive amounts of copper cause brain damage. People with malignant brain tumors may develop dementia or dementia-like symptoms because, brain, because of damage to their brain circuits or build up of pressure inside the skull. Risk factors for dementia and vascular cognitive impairment. The following risk factors may increase a person's chance of developing one or more kinds of dementia. Some of these factors can be modified while others cannot. Age. Advancing age is best known risk factor for developing dementia. Hypertension. High blood pressure has been linked to cognitive decline, stroke, and typical uh, types of dementia that damage the white matter regions of the brain. High blood pressure causes wear and tear to brain blood vessel walls called arteriosclerosis. Stroke. A single major stroke or a series of small strokes increases a person's risk of developing vascular dementia. A person who has had a stroke is at an increased risk of having additional strokes, which further increases the risk of developing dementia. Alcohol. <laughs> Alcohol. Most studies suggest that regularly drinking large amounts of alcohol increases the risk of dementia. Specific dementias are associated with alcohol abuse, such as wernickel korsakoff syndrome. Asteriosclerosis is accumulation of fats and cholesterol in the lining of arteries, coupled with the inflammatory process that leads to thickening of the vessel walls. Arteriosclerosis can lead to stroke, which raises the risk for vascular dementia. Diabetes. People with diabetes appear to have a higher risk for dementia. Poorly controlled diabetes is a risk factor for stroke and cardiovascular disease, which in turn increases the risk for vascular dementia. Down syndrome. Many people with Down syndrome develop symptoms of Alzheimer's disease by the time they reach middle age. Genetics. The chance of developing a genetically linked form of dementia increases when more than one family member has the disorder. In many dementias, there can be a family history of similar disease. In some cases, such as with the FTDs, having just one parent who carries a mutation increases the risk of inheriting the condition. A very small proportion of dementia is inherited. Head injury. An impact to the head can cause traumatic brain injury, TBI. Certain types of TBI or repeated TBIs can cause dementia and other severe cognitive problems. Parkinson's disease. The degeneration and death of nerve cells in the brain in people with Parkinson's disease can cause dementia and significant memory loss. Smoking. Smoking increases the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases that slow or stop blood from getting to the brain. Whew. The National Academy, Academies of Sciences and Engineering may published a report on evidence preventing di dementia. Diagnosis. Oh, by the way, blue highlighted links, you can hit them, you can find out about the preventing di the report. To diagnose dementia, doctors will first assess whether an individual has an underlying treatable condition such as abnormal thyroid function, vitamin deficiency, or normal pressure hydrophallosis that may relate to cognitive difficulties. Early detection of symptoms is important 
as some causes and can be treated. In many cases, the specific type of dementia may not be confirmed until after the person has died and the brain is examined. All right. <clears throat> is that really a diagnosis? So, an assessment, assessment may include medical history and physical exam assessing a person's medical and family history, current symptoms, and medication. And vital signs can help the doctor detect conditions that might cause or occur with dementia. Some conditions may be treatable. Neurological evaluations, examining balance, sensory response, reflexes, and other functions can help doctors identify signs of conditions that may affect the diagnosis or treatable with, or are treatable with drugs. Doctors also might use electro... <coughs> and cello, and cello. <laughs> yeah, okay. EEG, a test that re records patterns of electrical activity in the brain to check for abnormal electrical brain activity. It was funny as I learned about that stuff. My friend Steve taught me how to use a little head thing and measure the brain to put the diodes on and stuff. <clears throat> brain scans. Computed tomo tomo tomography. See, I wonder how you're saying that is one thing, uh, tomography, CT, and magnetic resonant imaging, resonance imaging, MRI, can detect structural abnormalities and rule out other causes of dementia. Positron emission tomography, PET, can look for patterns of altered brain activities, activity that are common in dementia. Advances in PET can detect amyloid plaques and tau tangles in AD. Cognitive and neuropsychological tests. These tests are used to assess memory, language skills, math skills, problem solving, and other abilities related to mental, mental functioning. Laboratory test. Testing a person's blood and other fluids, as well as checking levels of various chemicals, hormones, and vitamin levels, can identify or rule out conditions that may contrib contribute to dementia. Pre-symptomatic test. Genetic testing can help some people who have a strong family history of dementia identify their own risks. Psychiatric evaluation. This evaluation can help determine if depression or another mental condition is causing or contributing to a person's symptoms. Guidelines prepared by the National Institute on Aging, NIA, and Alzheimer's Association focus on three stages of Alzheimer's disease. Dementia due to AD, mild cognitive impairment, MCI, due to AD, preclinical, presymptomatic AD, presymptomatic identification is exclusively used as a research diagnosis at this point and has no relevance to routine clinical practice. The guideline also includes biomarker tests used in studies to measure biological changes in the brain associated with Alzheimer's disease and criteria for documenting and reporting Alzheimer's related changes observed during an autopsy. Treatment and management. There are currently no treatments to stop or slow dementia in neurodegenerative diseases. Some diseases that occur at the same time as dementia, such as diabetes and depression, can be treated. Other symptoms that may occur in dementia, like conditions, can also be treated, although some symptoms may, not, may only respond to treatment for a period of time. A team of specialists, doctors, nurses, and speech, physical, and other therapists familiar with these disorders can help guide patient care. Therapists can help with maintaining physical movement, address speech and swallowing issues, and help people learn new ways to handle loss of skills with everyday tasks such as feeding oneself. It is important to educate family, friends, and caregivers about a loved one's medical issues. Also, in-person and online support groups available through many disease awareness and caregiver advocacy organizations can give families and other caregivers additional resources as well as opportunities to share experiences and express concerns. Medications are available to treat certain behavioral symptoms, such as delusions, depression, muscle stiffness, and risk factors for vascular cognitive impairment, such as high blood pressure. Always consult with a doctor, as some medications may make symptoms worse. Yeah. Holy shit. All right. Most drugs for dementia are used to treat symptoms in AD. One class of drugs. Oh, fuck. I thought I was free. I thought I was in the free. Colonist. 
DERAS-C inhibitors can temporarily improve or stabilize memory and thinking skills in some people by increasing the activity of the cologenetic brain network, a subsystem in the brain that is highly involved with memory and learning. These drugs include dopazine, uh, oh, I'm sorry, dopazil, rivastigmine, and galatamine. <laughs> I can just see my friends like yelling out the proper pronunciation for the words. Okay. The drug. <sighs> Memantine is another class of medications called M NMDA receptor antagonist, which prevent declines in learning and memory. Memantine may be combined with a cholesterol terasis. <laughs> what the fuck that is? A colonist terasi inhibitor for added benefits. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, approved the drug. Oh, I can approve. Why can't they name it? Easy. Aducanumab aduhelm to reduce the building up of harmful amyloid beta plaques. There are no medications approved to treat or prevent frontal temporal disorders and most other types of progressive dementia. Sedatives, antidepressants, and other drugs used to treat Parkinson's and Alzheimer's symptoms may help manage certain symptoms and behavioral problems associated with the disorders. Medicines available for managing Lewy body dementia are aimed at relieving symptoms such as gait and balance disturbances, stiffness, hallucinations, and delusions. Studies suggest that the colonists Tarasi inhibitor drugs for Alzheimer's disease may offer some benefits. Some studies suggest that the God damn it suggest that the colonist Tarasi inhibitors used to treat people with AD might improve cognitive, behavioral, and psychotic symptoms in people with Parkinson's disease dementia. Many of the medications used to treat the motor symptoms of PD worsen the cognitive problems. The FDA has approved uh, Rivastigmine, an Alzheimer's drug, to treat cognitive symptoms in PDD. The National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, NINDS, is a leading federal funder of the research on nervous system disorders, including dementia. Other NIH Institute, the National Institute on Aging, NIA, is a leading federal funder of research on Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer's disease-related dementias. Although scientists have some understanding of the dementias and the mechanisms involved, ongoing research may lead to new ways to understand the causes of the disease, diagnose, treat, or perhaps prevent or block disease development. Research partnerships on dementia involving NINDS and NIA, and NIA include the National Alzheimer's Project Act, and it goes into a highlighted link, the Accelerated Medicines Partnership Program, another link in the description, M2 move, AD, molecular mechanisms of vascular etiology of Alzheimer's disease is a program, another program, uh, the Tau Center, the Dementia with Lewy Body Biomarkers Consortium. Additional NIMDS and NI research on age related and other dementias include clinical studies that offer an opportunity for helping researchers find a better way to safely detect, treat, or prevent dementias. Various NI institutes, NIH institutes, Support clinical studies on AD and related dementias at NIH Research Campus in Bethesda, Maryland, and other medical researchers across the U.S. And there's some links, you know, you can get some uh, information. Uh, this is important for people who are going to go into the site and look. You could, you know, round everything up and come up with a plan because this is such a terrible thing to happen to people. Uh, conclusion. Currently, there are no cures for the common dementias caused by progressive neurodegeneration, including AD, frontal temporal disorders, and Lewy body dementia. There is some evidence suggesting that controlling vascular risk factors such as high blood pressure may reduce the risk of developing dementia decades later. Some symptoms of dementia and conditions that cause dementia or have dementia-like symptoms are treatable. A better understanding of dementia disorders, as well as their diagnosis and treatment, will make it possible for affected individuals and their caretakers to live their lives more fully and meet daily challenges. NIH, primarily through research activities funded by NINDS and NIA, continues to improve diagnostics. 
design therapeutic approaches to dementias, and create tools, resources to help speed the development of treatments that can be used in practice. These discoveries may eventually lead to ways to slow the disease progression or even cure and prevent dementias. And then there's a section of where can you find more information. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. There's a glossary. But wow, this is a long one. A scary, terrifying one, especially when it's the brain and it's the mind. And again, you know, there are people with such, you know, challenges in life and their families and connective tissue. Uh, you know, I try to think when I get angry and behind the wheel, I get, you know, I'm working and like, who knows what the person next to me is going through. And, you know, I know it doesn't help a lot of people in that sense, but being aware, somewhat informed, get an opinion. You can watch a quick video on it. These type of disorders, mental illnesses, affect families in a huge way. And to sit there and have a mind deteriorate, mine, yours, the personality changes, take, not being able to take care of yourself, is truly frightening. But in the day and age of the progress we're making, the podcasts I do on medical breakthroughs and technology breakthroughs, I have a good feeling all this will be found out and fixed. Or at least, like it says here, able to slow down the symptoms and the major problems with these illnesses and then to defeat it. And that would be the hope. Again, this is a block on mental illnesses and disorders. My heart goes out to everybody just reading these things. And besides my fucking up the human language and things, my heart goes out to you. Compassion, understanding, I wish was just commonplace in this world. So to sum this up, you know, try to be aware, take care, have an opinion, be kind and loving. Um, you know, I read these things and it's a it's an eye opener, even when I'm preparing for them. So my best to you and yours, especially you and those with these challenges in life, the people you have in your life that mean a lot to you, the trials you have to go through, the struggles, and I wish you all the best. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.